Okay, hi, this is Ginger Cook, and uh, we're back with uh, with our picture. We were gonna we took this picture, which I had done before, but had not added any texture to. So it's sort of still acrylics, but it's not 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 real bumpy or anything. And we're talking about how to add texture, and the texture that we're using today is by Golden. It's called Extra Heavy Gel Molding Paste. That's what we're using. All right, so. And I just was showing everybody, I think this is so cool. I bought this in May of 2005, and it's still great. It, I've used it then, and it was still perfect. So anyway, that's what we're using. We're, um, we're doing a field of poppies, and we're sort of basing it loosely on this picture, but we made it into a square, 8 by 8 square. And in part 1, we show you how to get to here. And then I was going to dry this overnight, but I put it in front of a fan, and it dried in a couple hours. So it's been, it's had about four hours to dry, and it's all happy. In the meantime, I just put a little lid back on this plate of stuff, and here some of my greens are still good. The only thing I have to do is get out a plate from my reds. And what I want to do, since this is probably going to be the last of the big spenders here, I'm going to get out the fancy reds. Oh, no, the fancy reds. Yeah, why not? So we're going to have cad red medium for sure. But I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get out my System 7 acrylics. Here's a, well, for sure we know we want naphthal crimson, which is a System 3. Cad red medium is a 4. Here's road matter, matter which is a 7. Uh, what's this one? Another rose series matter. Let's see, what do I got? Um, I don't want any violet colors or uh, lizard crimson. We want to stick to the kind of the oranges and the red. Let's see what I got. Don't I have one more in here? I think somewhere. Let me just, I'm fumbling around in a big box of extra paint here that I keep out. Not in my normal stuff. Pretty sure I have one more tube of paint I want to put out here. Um, we could use Naples uh, yellow light. I like that color. And then, oh, this is a good one. Let's see, what else do we want to use? It's, it's sort of fun, you know. Normally I have a nor just a regular, plain old palette of stuff that I do all the time. It's probably all not even that interesting. But then every once in a while, I get out the good stuff. All right. We got cadmium red medium deep. We got that. So we, have, we for sure have that. And we have the rose batter. And there's one more I'm looking for. And I can't think I didn't put it back in this pile of stuff. Don't know what I did with it. So I guess we're just gonna we're gonna use that because this is what I've managed to grab out and I could fumble around in here for a while. But I didn't. So who 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 knows? Alright, so that's it. That's what we got. Put that back down. These are gonna be our extra bright colors. Uh for our flowers, and you know, flowers are one of the few things you can do right out of the tube. That's um, that's a great, great trick. You can go right out of the tube with these. And uh, so here's a kind of a used, you know, almost finished tube of cad red medium. So I'm gonna, I have some on that green plate, but I want to contaminate it. Cad red medium, and then I'm gonna put out uh, a rose matter, which is a, a really beautiful deep. Red by uh, Matisse. It's, it's a really, really gorgeous red. The perfect poppy red. And naphthal crimson. Those are the three colors that we want to use. Let's see, so where did I put um, cad red medium? I already have. Naphthal crimson. Let's, let's see, let's find one that's open. Yeah, got to find a tube that's open. Got to use the open tubes first. That's kind of a rule. All right, so here's a little naphthal crimson. Not a lot left of that, but let's just put out some of this right here. All right. Now, this is going to be fun. Let's see, I think we said some yellows here. What was this? Naples Yellows Light. I like that. Oh, I guess I could open that. Not open. How do you open? Oh, let me show you. It's a good trick if you're not sure how to open up. Oh, yes, you could use a needle or something like that to open it, you know, for sure. You could do that. Or you can just use a little palette knife like this and just kind of hold it real close like this because these are sealed. They come from Australia, these Matisse colors, and they come from Australia. So I'm just going to kind of poke the, um, the metal. And I'm holding the palette knife because it's kind of a sharp one. I'm very careful so I don't bend it. Otherwise, you know, a nail would have been good, some scissors, I don't know. 
probably a lot of things you could have opened this with. Would have been nice if the company had sent something to open it with. They do for their oil paints, which are also sealed, but not for their acrylics, which is, again, one wants to, wonders why. And of course, we're going to need white. Where'd the white go? Wow, this is an organization today. Well, I've been painting in the studio all day, and I noticed this was dry, and I said, wait, I have to stop and show everybody this. Here's a little bit of cad yellow medium, as long as we're just being the last of the big spenders. Let's put that out, a little tiny bit of that. And then for sure I want, um, for sure, ooh, I know, as long as I'm playing with Matisse, I'm going to get out some Australian Sienna. May or may not use it, but I'm getting it out because I feel like it. And so I'm really feeling, I am feeling so fluent in paint here, so fun. Got all this paint that we could play with. And then normally we just do kind of ordinary things, but not today. Today we are going to put on flowers and we're going to have a blast. How about a little Dazneen Purple? That's good. Who knows where we're going to put that. Tiny little bit of that out. Dazneen Purple. And uh, I'm probably getting really carried away. I think I was looking for white. When we last spoke, I was looking for my big tube of white, which was in here somewhere. Here's my here's my little tray of stuff. And normally it's all sitting neat in a, in a piled up here nicely. So now I'm fumbling around going, where'd the white go? I had it out earlier to paint something. Ah, here's some white. So here we go. Here's some white paint. We're going to just put a little bit of white. All right, we should be set now. I don't think we need anything else. We've got all the blues and greens over here. That was ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, cad yellow medium, yellow oxide. Oh, yeah, I wanted yellow oxide. Good thought. Yellow oxide. Now, one of the ways I can find my paint is I'm always careful to put the color on the back of the tube, so if it's not facing me, I can find it. All right, now we're set. Oh, yeah, and then what else do we need? Oh, yeah, we need, for sure we need some of this, this medium gel stuff. So let me wipe off a clean palette knife. We're going to get some of the, we're going to get this um, extra heavy gel molding paste. Okay, so I'm just going to screw that. You see, that's what it looks like. And I could have used a spoon, but I'm going to take a little bit of that and put plop it right here in the middle because I want even more texture than what we had. I don't need too much. Whoops. Good enough. And then I'm going to put this somewhere where I can find it again so it's not contaminated. Put the lid back on that. We're ready to go. Now, let's go back and look at the picture. So we know we've got a bunch of poppies that have to happen here. True? And everybody's pretty... Pretty congruent with that. Have to have a bunch of poppies. So let's let's get ready to do that. And remember that the poppies are going to be smaller in the back and they're going to get larger in the front. And uh, this is sort of the wildflower of France where blue bonnets are the wildflowers of Texas. Um, mostly Texans care about blue bonnets, but everybody on the planet seems to love poppies, which is sort of interesting for many reasons, I'm sure. But... I'm going to start with a, a clean brush. It doesn't have much on it. And I'm going to start up here in the front with the darkest color, which is going to be the rose uh, matter color, in a little gel like that. I'm going to mix it. You can mix it about 50-50, but I'm not going to do it that much. And I'm going to go ahead and say, here's a little bit of gel. And I'm going to just start here and dro dot, drop this on here and see how that is. I'm going to put a little bit more of the modeling I want these even higher, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the modeling uh, paste to it. Okay, and there we go. Kind of, now watch how I kind of, tw since I'm using the brush sort of mix too, see how I'm sort of rolling it off the brush and then just putting a little blob on the tip. And I'm going to sit here and say, here's a little poppy and then here's one. And just let's start putting them individually on here. Um, this is our darker color first. And if I wanted it a little bit darker, I could add a touch of Dazneen Purple, just a little tiny bit. And the reason I would do that is that maybe the ones in the front, because I've got to put another color on top of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that this is my under color for these. You'll notice that I'm doing them in patterns of six, six, seven, eight, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Can you guys kind of see that, how we're doing it? And then maybe I'll come over here and do the same thing. 
roll it off, the, ro kind of keep rolling it off your brush and then just sort of scooping it up. And I'm just almost just dropping it on. If you were doing this in oils, the paint just sort of grabs and acrylics is not that generous when you're doing this. So you have to sort of almost roll the paint off the brush to get it to stay. And I'm sort of, I'm not doing straight lines. This is not stars. Do, 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 do. I've got a pattern. I'm going to have a little cluster of flowers right here in a little pattern. And I'm just, even though I'm putting them on individually, they can be overlapping. Just touch that here. This is a little cluster. And I want to make sure some of that green that I so laboriously put on here is showing through. And because there's some texture to this, it's uh, going to allow these poppies to even be taller. There, just like that there. Maybe I can zoom in. If I zoom in, can you see it? Because I have to tell you, I'm kind of excited about how this is working. Oh, the wrong, keep pushing the wrong button for the zoom. I zoom in, I gotta push this up here. I'm do an autofocus. And then I'm gonna just click it here. All right, now you can see, here you can see just exactly where I wanna be with this. Kind of roll it off every two or three plants. Down here in the corner, we might do one, two, three. Now, you don't have to put them exactly where I put them, but think about where you're putting them because some are going to be little and some are going to be bigger. Now, it's true, we can go back with some green and make corrections and bury some behind some green leaves too. But um, obviously up on the side of this canvas, I've got some poppies that are growing up here and again, Keep rolling the excess off. I probably could have even, when I get up taller, I might even want to change brushes. Do one a little smaller than this. And I want to make sure I have little sections of green in here. Like for instance, this this little patch right in here, this little bit of dark green here. I'm just going to almost surround, almost in a triangular shape here with some poppies. And I'm not going to put more than one or two in here like that. And then this will be our little uh, cluster there of poppies next to it. And again, rolling the paint off the brush, just tapping it on here. So here we go. About over here, I really didn't do much in this corner. You're sitting there saying, well, how much longer are you going to sit there with this color? A little bit. I'm going to sit here with this first color before I go on top of it with a lighter color. And you're going, really seriously, we're going to have to do this again with another color? Yeah, seriously. Sort of dropping these on here. There's no water on my brush. This is strictly gel and color. Maybe a tiny bit of zosmine purple with that rose matter. Okay, now down here at the bottom for sure. When you put little flowers and things running off your canvas, you imply more is happening perspective wise. Like you're just sort of peeking over it, and that's important. And let's see, I think I'm not going to go, I think I don't need some little ones up here almost in a little half circle like that roll it off and we'll come in here with the little tiny dots could you use the back of your brush like this and just dot yes have you ever tried that just take the wooden part of your brush and scoop up the flower and just touch if you needed to do some little tiny ones just take the brush like this use the wooden part of it and just dot. You can do some very small stuff that way. And you actually have a lot of control, believe it or not. This is sort of a trick. Oh, I wish I thought of that. You're going, yeah, well, it works. It really does. Good for, like, you know, if you're, you know, making an eye and you have to do the dark center, you can take, this is kind of a big, you know, some of your brushes have some real small ends to them. So we're going to say that here's some smaller plants coming through here like this. And you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Now, and it still allows me to do texture. I want to make sure that over here on this edge, I've got lots of color here, over here, like so. And again, we're doing it in patterns. There is a pattern to this. Think of um, clusters of three, five, seven, I'm going to turn the brush back over now. Doing some bigger ones here. Okay, just dropping it on here. That is, you know, if you're having trouble, that certainly is a plan to do. 
And maybe up here we'll put a few off here on the side. Going up like this. I'm going to do all of this before I change colors. Let's see, what about in here? Yeah, I want, definitely want some in here. Tap on a few here. Again, they overlap, but you do one dot at a time. That's the trick. You just one little dot at a time and allow them to overlap. Catch on some of that texture that you've done. Okay. Now, I'm going to switch to um, Naphthal Crimson. I'm going to just switch there a little bit and see what happens if I add a little bit of this red. Um, okay, at this point, if I want to change colors, I will have to skin these over. But the Naphthal Crimson is interesting because it's a little bit brighter. Look what it's doing. Just in a couple places. And red and green are compliments. And maybe that's the reason people like Poppy so much is that Red flowers are always appealing. People love red roses. I want to have some flowers coming across here like this. But I haven't, I'm not quite ready to do that yet. Let me just try a little cad red medium and texture like this. A little cad red medium and some texture. Let me show you what I'm talking about because I want these poppies way back here to be or well let's see maybe I can show you these are going to be brighter when I go on top see what happens when I touch the cad red medium on top of these see what happened to the flowers see we had the dark when I put a little drop of cad red medium right on top I automatically get a shadow from the flower underneath now this is better if I had um, dried it so right we'll just continue on with the rose matter way up here little tiny flowers way up here in the uh, way up here in the top and they're little they get real small up here if you have to, you have to use a small little um, back of a brush that's fine Let me see. in fact I'm going to put this one here the gel isn't going to dry on it anytime soon it'll be okay I'm not really a big fan of pointy brushes for this you know ones that come to a point but I'll show you how that might work here's just one like this now scoop up some um, paint. Oh, is that too orange? All right, and I find this a little laborious with the tip of a little pointed brush, but you can do it. Here we go. Just I'd rather almost use the back of it at this point. Use the for me it would be easier to use the back of this brush than the little tip because the tip is kind of bends and I can't get exactly what I want. That's really more for tiny lines. So here's the back of this brush. It's very small. Just using the wooden part. Dipping it in the paint that we've mixed. And these come in clusters, right? You've got to think about they're not uh, stars. So start overlapping. Allow for some of the background to show through. You went to a lot of trouble to put it. And just take your time. Now I'm going to pause the video and just keep putting in some flowers because I don't think you need me to see, see to put in every one, but I'm going to do that. Okay, so I've just put in a few more across here. You can see that. Now I'm going to keep filling it in. I just, I mean, this is going to take some time to do this, no question about it. So let me get out my palette knife here. I'm going to mix some paint. I'm just going to. I'm sort of running out of paint. This may happen to you. If you run out of paint, make some more and pile it up. Put the, put the gel in. You can go up to 50-50. I think I told you that. You, you, nice and, say we want it to, when it stands up like whipped cream. All right, so now, still going. The back of this little brush. Still in the rose matter at this point. Just now, oh, much better. Now I can dip in there. Just think it was getting a little lazy here. Just kind of roll this brush around because I've got it. It's a round brush, so if I'm picking up paint, it's probably on all sides of that little stick. All right, and let's see what else have I got. And some parts of this are solid. Does that make sense? Even though I'm doing individual little flowers here, it's solid. They're like little clusters. 
of plants. And you want to make sure that you're leaving holes of green. If you ever paint in any, any water, uh, where it's the ocean, there's some holes of green. And, uh, you know, like in the foam, the, you'll see these ocean holes. This is not that different than that. These are like little holes that you're painting in here. And you've got to be able to put them back. And one of the nice things I like about shooting a video is I can look at the TV, at my computer screen, and it's like backing up from this painting a long way. And I can see how I did with that. Because my goal here is to make sure that I am leaving areas of green, like it's like it's a little odd shapes of green. And, you know, there can be one or two little flowers that cross over it, but basically it's still an, um, an odd thing of green and maybe there's everything sort of connects on some weird level but there's little solid areas of flowers that are done each individual brush stroke so you know it depends what kind of painter you are I mean I've got some students that could do this for a month very carefully they go Woo, and then they'd look and then this but my feeling is do one two or three and then look and see what you did then look again stop and look don't just mindlessly start tapping because then you'll end up with a pattern you hate. Have a plan. Years ago when I was uh, learning to ski, when I was a kid, the instructor gave me some very good advice. They said, because I used to ski and make a turn and then I'd stop. And then I'd ski and I'd make a turn and I'd stop. They go, what are you doing? Um, I'm deciding where to go next, particularly when it was very mogul and hilly. I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. And he said, plan two or three turns ahead. And this is what you want to do in your painting. Plan two or three patterns ahead. Kind of have an idea where you're going. You can kind of see where I'm leaving this out here. I have a great Facebook, uh, uh, Pinterest page. I have a Facebook page too, Ginger Cook Live on Pinterest and Ginger Cook Live on Facebook. But I have a really, I think, outstanding Pinterest page. People say, oh, I don't do Pinterest. But Pinterest is wonderful. I really love them. And what I do is that um, I put my artwork of my students up on Pinterest in, in their own gallery so that they can see their picture and they can then pin it to their gallery page and their friends can see it. And maybe someone will like their painting and get pinned a lot of times. Which is kind of cool. And then I have a board for art supplies. And I think things I think either would be fun to have or maybe things you shouldn't buy. I mean, I'm the first person who will tell you don't buy this. It's junk. And I'll say it too. And in my opinion, it's junk. So I have, a, And then I've got a really good art studio board, almost like a wish list. That if you had any kind of art studio in the world. And I've gone around looking for pictures of people with outstanding art studios. Because, you know, even though I've been painting for years and years, um, my studio is still in progress, as shocking as that is. It is still in progress. And, of course, I filmed this not, and I filmed this on a desk um, with the computer and everything. So this is in its own little alcove. This has got its own little room, this filming room, all by itself. But uh, so here we go. We're still getting the poppies. And I'm not anywhere... What's shocking is I'm not anywhere close to being done with this. So anyway, i got to tell you that if you haven't decided to follow me on Pinterest, I invite you to do that because it's fun. Ginger Cook Live, all one word. Otherwise, you get some lady that cooks. I didn't, I didn't uh, kind of catch on to Pinterest until last year. My daughter, Cinnamon, she does a heart party. Have you ever seen some of her great videos? I've changed colors now, by the way. I'm now going to start with some cad red up here. Um, just now. You can kind of see where it's a little brighter. Anyway, Cinema does Heart Party. And uh, she's got, oh gosh, I don't know, thousands of followers on Pinterest. And everybody talks to her on her Facebook page. Hardly anybody talks to me on my Facebook page because I went for a long time and never even opened it. It just seemed like there was so much stuff you had to do and now I've got to do this too. Are you kidding me? But now I'm being very good. I actually look at my Facebook messages and I will answer you if you write me on Facebook. Comment. I try to put up interesting things. 
not every day, at least once in a while, at least several times a week, I'll put up something interesting on, on Facebook. And I always put up interesting things on Pinterest. Um, that's Because, you know, a picture speaks a thousand words. Isn't that true? Haven't you ever heard that expression? I certainly have. And now you see we're doing the highlights on this. I didn't bother to dry it. I'm just using the brush and starting to make the highlights on this, on these uh, flowers. Okay, obviously I need some more flowers in here. Don't have enough. Roll it off there like that. Some nice little group of flowers. Now I do have some good holes here, but I've also got it's it's too much. So let me get a little cad red medium, or rather a little naphthal crimson. See what I can do. And a little bit of yellow. Let's try that. I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow, cad yellow medium, and a little naphthal crimson. Gonna make a different orange. Gonna come back here and try this color now. Ooh, that's pretty. Kind of in the back, and some of that yellow showing. Because I kind of mixed it with the stick. It's too much. There we go. It's interesting about reds. It's hard to imagine that you'll see all these, but you will. Your mind will translate this. This is all mixed into that nice gel medium. Modeling paste. And could you have used a gloss gel or something? Yeah, that'd be real pretty, and they'd, they'd have a real shine. I think I said that before. A real shine, and then I don't know that it would... Um... Okay, so see, I did this. Nothing's happening. All the paint's up there on the side of it, not on the tip. Get it back on the tip again. If I want to do something in here, I need to put some more flowers. Okay. One, two get paint. One, two, get paint. All right. Well, that's coming along. It's coming along. I think I could use some more flowers in here. Anyway, so we got Pinterest. And then I put guest artist videos on there, too. I mean, you're probably looking around. You know, everybody goes to YouTube and looks at different art videos. And every once in a while, I find something that's just really cool by somebody. And I'll put it on my Pinterest page and say, check out this guy. There's a guy named Navarro. And he's, and he's just um, he's just tromping off into the woods with all his stuff. It's very admirable. I think I'm past the time where I feel like tromping off in the woods anywhere with anything. Back but years ago when, we, when I lived in Aspen, Colorado, we used to take our Trail 90s up into the mountains and camp out at night under the stars and freeze. And I dreamed of hotels with central air and heat. <laughs> Sorry, this was just not me. I can, I mean, I know that there are people that just absolutely love this stuff. Somebody asked me one time if I ever smoked. And you know, back, you know, I, I quit smoking when I was 22. But I had smoked from the time I was about, I don't know, 17 to the age of 22. And, and the emphasis for me, for quitting to smoking, was we had ridden our, my, Cinema's dad and I had ridden our motorcycles way up to the top, way past the ski lifts, and we were looking over the top of the world and all these wildflowers, and uh, we were up so high that the matches would not light. There wasn't enough oxygen in the air to light the matches, to light the cigarettes. And so her, Cinnamon's dad, my heart party gal here, uh, is very inventive. The guy's a genius, Colby. And so he took the spark plug off, <laughs> true story, out of the Trail 90s. He took one of the spark plugs out. And then one of us was supposed to crank over the motorcycle with the foot crank. And then he had put his face next to the, and the cigarette inside where the spark plug was. And we were lighting the cigarette from inside, you know, uh, using the motorcycle. And at that moment, there was this beautiful elk and its uh, mate that had wandered by. 
and it was close enough because it was real quiet up there. There were probably not a lot of people. Anyway, it wasn't afraid of us. I mean, it wasn't like standing next to me, but, you know, it was about four or five car lengths away. And I'm going, look at that elk. And he, Colby was so busy lighting the cigarettes that he missed it, that bounded away when I spoke. And he missed the elk because he was busy lighting cigarettes. And I thought, there's something wrong here with this whole smoking business if we can be so consumed with trying to light one of these dumb things. Now we were, not, you know, well, we were about four or five hours out of town. It's not like we couldn't have made it back to civilization, even gone down another hour and probably got enough oxygen to light the, you know, have the matches work. But anyway, um, I thought, you know what? I am never smoking again. This is it. This is the last cigarette I will ever have because this is dumb. And, um, Oh, well, that, and then the other thing was, I, I confess, they went up to $3 a carton. And I said, that's it, I'm not paying that either. So, you know, <laughs> not paying $3 a carton. And I'm certainly not going to miss Elks because we're too busy trying to light cigarettes using the spark plug uh, part on the motorcycle. So anyway, that's my, I think about this because I see all these wildflowers and there were so many beautiful wildflowers up on that mountain, Aspen Mountain. And... There have been some lovely, lovely places to go see and visit. We used to do all that. You can see where I'm, where it's brighter. I'm using cad red medium. Can you guys see that? Where the where the poppies appear a little brighter. See, like right there. That's the cad red medium now. So now we're going back over this and turning on the lights. And at some point, I'm gonna dry this. All these back here need to be brighter and a little some point I will dry it, but I want all these happily bright back here. Now, I probably need to take my palette knife and take some cad red medium and that gel stuff because it's not, that was a little sloppy. I didn't like it. All right, now, here we go. It was going flat on me is what I mean. Def definitely going flat on me. Here we go. See, now, now I want my I want my texture back. I got busy talking to you. It's all your fault. I was talking to you and wasn't paying attention. So now we're back with the cad red medium, adding a few little highlights on top of all these other ones. And if for some reason you didn't have rose matter, it doesn't matter that, you know, just use a nice red, you know, for the base color. You put a little dazzling purple with it, and then you're going to do cad red medium on top of that. All right, so you can see where I've got some lighter colors and some darker ones, like um, like this little section in here that's pretty dark, right in here like this, and I need to sort of connect some of these now. I've still got my little holes of green, got my little holes of green, but then I want to make sure that I have enough red here. don't think I have enough in here. When you visit France, which we have done a couple times, my daughter and I, um, the trick is that in a certain in the spring, these poppy fields start growing and they've been doing it forever. And they do grow in just massive areas and they're just beautiful. And if you're going to go for poppies, then you can't go for sunflowers because that's a different time of year. Okay, I'm going to come up here and get rid of some of this up here. Okay. Diff totally different time of year for that. Now I've got a big glob on here, so I'm being very careful how I'm pushing, just barely touching it. So I've got a big glob on the end of that. I'll fix it, fill it off. There we go. Let's see, how's that doing? Oh, it's looking pretty good. Feels a little dark down in here, doesn't it? You know why? Because where this dark green is, see where the dark green is? That's going to make the red look darker. It's because it's basically going to be reflecting kind of off what's around it. So even though all these colors are similar, this little left-hand corner, simply because we put all this dark green, is going. these flowers are going to look much darker than these, next to, like say these up here next to the lighter colors. Under, with the lighter colors underneath. Okay. So, for instance, if I were painting, say, a vase of roses, 
um, and I wanted one flower to be a little brighter than the others, I would make sure that that flower was going to be a red rose. I would make sure I painted that flower white first, and then paint it. And uh, as opposed to, say, painting it on top of a bunch of dark green leaves. And that flower, even if I painted everything else exactly the same, would look brighter. And even though you wouldn't see the white because the red would just kind of reflect better. This is looking pretty nice. Let me just uh, zoom back out here. It's coming along, don't you guys think so? It's coming along. Um, I want to take uh, this cad red medium now and some yellow. And I'm going to mix that, that cad yellow medium with it. Now I've got even a brighter orange. About 50-50 like that. There we go. Now let's let's highlight some of these back flowers. See what happens when we do that. Oh, that's nice. Oh, the beautiful. How about over here? Um, I'll tell you what, let's pause dry everything. Let's skin this over and then we'll do these highlighting colors, all right? So I'm going to pause and skin. Okay, so, ooh, it's looking nice, isn't it? Now, this is not totally dry, all right? Here's, the, here's my tiny little brush. It's not totally dry, but it will take color now without mixing it. So here's my little highlights. I'm just using the tip of this small brush where I mix that cad yellow medium and uh, cad, cad red medium together, to just sort of lighter orange. Back up here in the sun, where these little poppies are, way back here. Back up here, well, I don't know, it's kind of a cloudy day. I'm not sure that the sun's too good a word here, but I'm just tapping this on top. And now I've already got the texture, so I don't need to put more texture. I'm just adding some highlights back there. I think I feel like I need to zoom in. Um, there. All right, there. So it's zoomed in and kind of auto-focused. This is where it gets pretty, all these little colors. And I know it takes a little patience. Some of you probably have a lot more patience than me. You're going, it doesn't seem too bad what she's talking about. But um, for me, that's important is to, I like lots of colors. Some people might have been happy with two. I'm saying, let's go for more than that. Let's be the last of the big spenders. And maybe like in here, let's see some of this came this way. And maybe down in here I might catch a few little light highlights like that. And I, can you, you can see the texture now, can't you? How pretty it is and how it's sort of built up. And here, let's, let's see if we try some cad, just straight cad red medium now in a couple places. I want you to see that. Where again, it sort of, the other stuff was uh, acrylic dry darker first off. So that other stuff was a little dark. So now I've gone straight back to cad red medium. And I'm just brightening up these flowers in the front. And boy, you can really see it now, can't you? Uh, if you don't own cad red medium, you, this is a color you have to have. You can get along with some other stuff, but cad red you have to have. If you don't have the rose matter, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. But uh, no pun intended. But cad red medium is really a luscious color to have. And you don't think about it too much because most art kits come with some form of it or another. You'll see a lot of artists, you know, recommend that you use it. And occasionally I run into somebody that didn't bother to buy it. I was going, go get it. This is a great, you can't add enough yellow to naphthal crimson to make a cad red. And also there's something called cad red medium hue, which believe it or not is brighter than this, but some people are allergic to cad red medium. And see this little, see how my hands all covered in paint? That little bit of paint would be enough to send them into anaphylactic shock. I promise you. The, the whatever's in this this paint can really affect some people. I knew I knew one lady, well actually two. I've got a good friend who lives here in Houston. And um, she can't have any of it on her. And she'll start, she'll start to get red streaks going up her arm. It's all scary. And then there was another lady who whose whole chest turned kind of red. Her skin started to turn red and she was having trouble breathing. 
and it seemed like the effect and I said are you sure it's just it's every time she used that paint but what we discovered is manufacturers know about this stuff and they make something called a, a hue for certain colors and hues are artificially there's no cadmium in it hues are artificially made and that's the difference now do you see because we did the dark you see my shadows underneath here and you and we've got the light colors on top now what we're looking at is do we need to put any colors in between like for instance here's a spot now now a few we got our little green patches but maybe we'll just intersperse some flowers and then here's a little green patch but maybe we'll connect it somehow like that so not very much but somehow these connect a little bit maybe with smaller flowers and let's go back to my dark red here let's see what pure rose matter looks again on top of this here's pure rose that's pretty because again red's one of those colors that you could do a couple coats with and not be a miss Ooh, that looks really nice i'm liking that you can see all the great texture and right in here um i need to dry this real quick and come back but with some green but let's just go up here a little bit and just do some tiny little um flowers like this using the brush now don't have to have texture anywhere we've implied texture we've certainly implied it little tiny ones up here like this there you go just something all right we're zooming back out oh very pretty i think i think i think that's looking splendid then i have to look at this and go okay so what else what else could i do um i can see i want you to see the difference between the two pictures now can you see this see this one is nice you like this before, I know you did, but you like this one better, don't you? But we probably need to fill in a few more flowers in places. You're going, really? Seriously? You did a lot of that. Let's let's go on the edge here and uh, take that. Let's just go on the edge of the canvas. So let's just close it in a little bit on the sides. There, that, that's better. See how it just sort of closed the picture in? A little bit here and I'm gonna just fill in some of this in here like this I feel like I I could have a few more massive plants there we go that's nice and then what about over here like this oh uh, let's see what can I put could I put some right there Well, you know, there could be some green sticking out and some red. It doesn't have to be everywhere. All right, so we're going to say that that's it. Let's just take a minute and and dry it. I feel like I could do like a little hill here. Maybe by just kind of curving the flowers this way, change direction, and apply a little hill. Let's make some dark ones for sure. All right, I'm applying a little hill right there. See, so it's just not straight across. Did you see I didn't, just don't have it straight across. I have planned something else. All right, we're going to dry it, pause it, and dry it, and go back with a little green, and then you have, will have discovered how we've made this nifty picture. Okay. All right, so it's not totally dry, It's, but if I touch it, wet paint, if I, it, I could squish it down, but if I touch it, wet paint isn't jumping up at me. How's that? So I used that cool air blast thing. Now, remember I said we had a little of this left. Let's take uh, this little pointy brush. is not going to be any good for this. Let me just take a let me rinse the brush off here. Here we go. Now, I don't need any more texture to make this work. I just need color. So let's see. I grabbed some white over on this other plate. Here's some white. Remember we did some fun. What colors? We grabbed some good colors here. Let's use this, I like this yellow color, this light yellow color that we found. It was pretty, whatever that was. Now let's see, where do I want to put this color? All right, I've got, well, I like that, that one was, remember? I forget why I even told you it was, because I don't use it very often. 
All right, back, back. Where did I put that color? Well, it'll be in the credits here somewhere. It's this Naples, Naples yellow, I think, is the one it was. All right, so I'm going to put some of this light yellow back here. And my brush is a little dirty, so let me wipe it off. Start again. A little bit of Naples yellow back here against my background here. Just tap on some, just a little tiny bit here like this. Way in the back. Set it back here on this hill. And don't make a straight line. That's it. Notice how I'm pinching the brush. Don't make a straight line. Maybe it just comes here and then you skip a space. And then over here, you're going to skip a space. And now I'm going to take a little bit of um, yellow oxide. Come right up to this. Give this a little bit of a shadow. Like that. Right on top of this other stuff we did. This is that we're talking about layers of color. There we go. That's that's sort of pretty. And I can kind of make that a little bit thinner. And let's see. I think I had before... I had some burnt sienna on this other plate. And I don't have any burnt... You know, if you don't have burnt sienna, let's make something like that. Oh, I put out some Australian sienna. That's pretty. A little bit of white. Let's just put these colors out. Let's see what they do. Yeah, see, that's a little bit of a... Here's just pure Australian sienna, and that has... It's it's a, almost a trans... When it's pure out of the tube, it's almost like burnt sienna. It's a little bit more translucent. When you add white to that, it goes gold. So you see how we put a little bit of that in there. Just tap that on top. Okay, and that's pretty. If I mix that with Naples yellow, what could I do? Maybe I want... Ooh, maybe I want to tap in... Ooh, t way too much. Too big a little tiny dots of this lighter color in here. Just maybe in my poppy somewhere. Put some poppy back on top of that. That was too much. There. But I could you can lighten up some places if you need to. If you found that you sort of lost some of your light, you can put it back. This is dried enough where if you just tap a little bit of this light color. Can add a few little highlights where maybe you know the sun sort of shining back this way from this kind of peaking there you can kind of create a little path still want a little more up here okay now I want to just look at this picture a little bit more say what do I what would I like here just a little bit of that color just dot it through so even if you lost heaven forbid your background color now we had sort of a light green color, if you remember. And I still have some left, some of this light green color. And I want to put that in a few places. So I might come here and just touch that. Just in a couple places. And I might touch over some of my flowers. And that gives the, the green. See how, if you do that, that makes the green. See, just on top of the flowers, I can touch that green. That's cool, isn't it, how that works? Just just, oh, just on the side, maybe, of a flower. So even if you didn't get your shape perfect, not to say you wouldn't, but what if you didn't? I mean, stuff happens. So where do I want? I want to, I want to keep it still dark down in here. So these light colors, if I said there were any, they would be up in here. This has got to be a thalo green color. Light, lighter color up in there. Okay, and then I want a real dark green color. Remember, we mixed that already. It's ultramarine blue and had yellow medium. And I want to come back on, in here and make sure I have enough dark colors in my poppies. Like way back down here in the right-hand corner, I know that I want it pretty dark down here. I'm just going to come back and darken that corner. And then what about in here? I think what I need to do is actually take that little brush and use the back of it and dot the dark green. Now that's because I don't want it everywhere, but I'm going to just take that green color, no gels, and I'm going to 
put a few little dots of dark green because I know where I want it and I don't think I can get it as small as I need it. I need a few little bits of dark green in here and that's how I'm getting it. And that's an interesting trick, isn't it? You can even break up some of these flowers with the dark green. If you didn't get your shapes right, fix it now. And there's some really dark green. Actually, it's pretty dark in here. Kind of a two-tone green in there. Come back in here, about in here. A few little dark, little tiny bits of dark. Very small. I'm not trying to get it up that way. Just trying to get it over here, maybe on the side. I'm going to say, let's just break up the side a little bit here. With the green's coming through. Might break it up here too. Say there's some green, some light and dark green coming through here. Maybe that light green I can get on the stick. Yeah, I've got some, whoops, light green coming through here like this too. Put it back with some dark green. Ooh. There we go. Just all like that. So it's sort of broken it up. And now I'm looking at this area right here and saying what could happen there. Maybe some dark green in this. Just a hair. Break that up. Dark green back down in this corner. Up from the bottom like this. I don't know why I have any white on here. Let me just wipe that off. I want the dark green color coming up here from the bottom. And I can just tap tap it on. Let me just move this up so you can see what I'm talking about. Tapping it on. And I feel like something has to happen right in here. Now then this is gets a choice. Do I want light green or dark green in there? I don't know. Maybe in here I want, ooh, I don't want any white on it. Probably should have used a palette knife instead of the back of the stick. To, um, I just need some light green color here. I don't need much. Oh, I'm going to have to break down and get a palette knife because it's not mixing. Let's see. Where do we got a palette knife? All right, so I'm just going to come up here like this with the plate. This is left over from our first section. But I just want a light green. I'm just going to pull it off the palette knife like this. Then I'm going to come up here like this and add just, just a little bit of the green here. And this is all you, all it takes. Maybe right in here I'll pull a few. So even if you totally messed up your pattern, you can get your pattern back. How's that? You can get your pattern back and I still want some dark way up in here. On this right hand side, so that this is darker. And this is where you just decide where, where you want to see the darks. A little tiny bit of dark in here. Like this coming down. And this is actually a darker one than I used in my background. So it, it's more pronounced even against this dark green on the background. This little bit of green that I'm making has got a lot more blue in it. And it's darker on, over on that side. So that's that's the that's the trick on this thing. Like this. And then maybe a little bit over here. And then I look at this picture going, well, what else could I do? Um I want a little gray color, so I'm gonna take a little cad red medium and add it to that this green. Like that. Let me just see if I can show you. I want a little want a little gray green here. So put a little cad red medium. And I've got a little tiny bit of blue in it. That was a... See, this is the phthalo, I think. Uh, yeah, this, this which is... Alright, if you're not sure which is which, after a while on the plate, just take some white. You can tell. That's purple. This was phthalo. Phthalo is your tropical blue here, see? So here's my phthalo. Okay, so I'm going to take some of that phthalo, add it to that. There we go. So now I've got this sort of light green color. And I'm going to just highlight my little brush here a few places on this tree. That's 
here like this. So that, that looks a little better. So see how we gave that tree a little bit of something. It needed something because we did. I didn't spend a lot of time on the trees back here. Could have. Um, I could have said that there's here's a lighter green here. I could have. Now that this is dry, gone here with a little brush, and said that the some of this was lighter and darker on these bushes right here in the front. Again, it's a matter of doing a little pattern. Um, just tap in a little bit of this light green color, kind of this grayed green on this bush. Like that. So depending on whether you're trying to say anything about the front bushes or not, where's some mist? I'm just going to mist all this. Depends on I'm just going to say that there's some lighter blues in here. Now I can work on this background, make it sort of interesting. I'll, I feel like something needs to happen with the background, so now I've just got this light blue color. It needs a little more red in it. Gray it out. I'm breaking up some of these plants back here. Like that. Oh, I like that a lot. That's pretty. And I feel like this is, oh, we've got some real depth in here, and we've got these pretty, pretty poppies. And I'm not trying to do any detail on the poppies. Some people might want to take a little brush like this, for instance, and a little light green color. You know, maybe. And, and maybe just, um, you know, try to do stems or something. But we're, this wasn't that kind of painting. This was never meant to be that kind of painting. We don't, we don't need a lot of light colors in here. We just, this was our, if we get this too busy, then you lose all this. So I think this is a good place to stop, except, oh no, we have to finish this. I, I feel like this tree just sort of went up here and quit. So let's just bring this down here like that. Say that maybe that tree went there. Something, we needed to do something with that tree. and um, Maybe there's one back here too. Let's just do another one. Kind of hiding behind there. Let it um, branch off. Let's see, a little water on the brush. Pinch it to a point. Do a little tiny bit of... Uh, there we go. Now let's see. Let's put a little of that light highlight color on it. Let's see, a little more white, a little more light color on here, on the edge. This is called turning on and off the lights when you come back to the rest of it and stop like that. And that's, that is too bright, so we're going to turn off the lights on that. There we go. Just a little of that showing. Your eye will go to the lightest light and the darkest dark. So you sure don't want to put some weird thing up there somewhere where the eye wants to go to. You know, just don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you've got... Um, your, you know, our poppies are our deal here. So that's, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the poppies. And there's this nice background, some nice trees and everything's been sort of muted out and I think that's our picture. Let me move the tape out of the way, move all our stuff, move all our little plates, and I want you to see the difference between here's this one, which is nice, right? I know you guys like that before I started, and here's this one, and see, see what a difference it made. But just took a little more time to do this one, and quite frankly, I could even come back with some of these reds, which are still good, right? and put in a few little more bright reds in a few places? Sure. I do that? Absolutely. 
you know, I might look at this for a day or two and then decide, just stare at it and decide what would happen. Because remember, sometimes you can follow a path with your eye, you know, and you create that by the lights. The light red, go, the cad red mediums kind of go on top and the darks go on the bottom of, of the flower. But uh, I feel like this flower needs to come all the way off the canvas like this. There we go, like that. So it looks like we've got our field of poppies. Let me move this blue piece of paper and look what I found, the color wheel. I've been looking all over for that. I would have told you more about color wheel stuff today. I couldn't find it, but there it is, our color wheel. All right, well, um, I guess what I could tell you about it is that red is opposite green on the color wheel, so they're complements, so anytime you start throwing in a a painting with red and green you've done okay uh, that looks all right so thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and um, if you're watching this on YouTube I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel um, and also to consider joining me for my weekly classes at gingercooklive.gallery so thanks very much have a great day